Today, we are going to take a look at three different ease and game changer trump patterns you will be either using already or you are going to enjoy using in the future. These are really simple, but quite effective at the same time. But let's not lose any more time and hop in. And the first one is what I call darkroom percussive patterns. The first thing that I will do is just go to our deep melodic techno sample packs and I'm going to pick something, uh, some kick. So we just have four to the floor pattern like this. I'm just going to shorten this up a little bit. Just making it slightly darker so that we can have this darker feel in the kick. And I'm going to bring this down. And then you can also play with this one if you like there. I like this dirtiness in the kick. Just to make the contrast right straight from the beginning, I'm just going to add a slight hi-hat. Our deep melodic pack and I'm going to grab some hi-hats. Something like this. Let's again shorten this up. The main thing with this pattern is creating the rooms. One, the big room for the percussions and the small room for the hi-hats and brighter stuff. So, so we're going to go for the returns, return, just pick a reverb and I'm just going to cut this off, cut this off. It's quite simple really, bringing it down, a bit of reflection, a bit of diffusion and 100% wet so that we can sand a bit. I bring down the size a little bit, stereo field a bit as well. together. And the most important part of for this pattern is of course the percussions. We will start with the low dirt I would call. Any sample is possible to use here. What I like to do oftentimes is just to put a shaker sound because they have oftentimes very interesting greedy sounds and you never know the results before you do it. So I'm going to just pick randomly some shakers. And you are wondering like shaker and low end, how is that possible? What we're going to do is just pick one of those. And to understand how the sound will be, I like to put something like, uh, and just loop it, right? And then just play with the kick. And then the trick is transpose it down all the way. Isn't this super cool? I always find that shakers are makes the most interesting low end. And then of course we're gonna get an EQ to just get it right. And of course the important thing here, the side chain the kick. I'm gonna put a look ahead as well, so that they, we are ducking before the kick hits. But you can do always like try around the other one to see how that one sounds. Oh, this one sounds better actually. what I call low end. Just to complement this one, I often tend to do like in other serum, just a regular deep sub bass and create something like this. Here the pattern is up to you, really you can pick something like uh, that you enjoy. I will pick something like this. I feel like we can enjoy one more like this. Oh, wow, such a, such a cool low end. Second most important part, the dark percussions, how we do it, it's quite simple. I'm going to go for our melodic deep again, and I'm going to go for the percussion. So anything that sounds interesting will be fine. This one, for example, I'm going to just loop it here so that I can make a shorter loop. Here with the dark percussions, you try to put them off beat, like when the kick doesn't hit so that we can hear it when we turn it down. And then maybe here, like that. I'm thinking maybe a bit more resonant sound. What if we take this? This one will sound cool probably. This one probably will sound cool. Again, I'm going to try it out on the go. Get an EQA so that we can get rid of highs. And the important part here before I play selecting the sound is creating the reverb. And these are the places that actually you need an insert reverb to create this dark ambience. What we're going to do, make it really wet, maybe even 100% wet, but maybe making it really short. 
so that if we will feel it really next to us, the sound of the reverb. I'm gonna go for the high and the size can maybe we can bring it down, stereo we can bring it down. High cut we can keep because we want the dark sound. And the chorus I'm gonna take it away, something like this sister. Let's try something else. I opened up the reverb, reverb a little bit so that I can hear the initial thumb and get my volume this stuff. Now, I would call this one a call. Um, then a, so we need to answer this one with something else. This idea is quite simple. I'm going to just duplicate it. Hence, you can actually use this reverb on the group, group them up and then use that way. So you have single reverb. But now I'm just going to do it quick and dirty. And we're going to take this one now and try to answer this guy. Maybe some around. The answering means that you, you'll use it when the other guy is not there and somehow feel like these two is connected. So maybe around here. Let's turn this down. And uh, at the moment, we are a bit repetitive because we are using the same thing the thing that you can do basically get away from it is like you can just consolidate them and maybe take this off then we have a bit of variation there let's try this one the final piece should be probably putting a top chord and put a delay on top of that so that we can feel the rest of the ambience with this warming delays. Preset pack, I remember there was a top chord there. Moving dubs, so let's pick that. Maybe we can make it even darker. Isn't this super cool? If you're enjoying the video up to now, please consider subscribing to the channel and hitting that like button. It doesn't cost anything, but it really keeps me motivated to make more videos in the future. But other than that, let's continue. Yeah, and that that was the first one. Again, you can actually add a bit, couple of more percussions to maybe enhance the ambience a little bit. This was just the beginning. This was the first pattern. And the second one will be the what I call call and claps. So let's take a look at that one. For this one, I have just again prepared a loop that's coming from our deep um, melodic techno preset pack. Sounds like this. So basically we are needing in clap, but this time the clap will be quite different. If you are making melodic techno, you already heard probably this type of claps quite often. This is very melodic techno stuff. Deep melodic pack, I'm gonna go for the claps. First we need something a bit tighter clap. Like this, right? The super classic analog style. And then we need something a bit bigger. Something like this shorten the loop like this so what we're going to do first start with our tight clap right dum dum ta, dum dum ta. this is like uh, if i just loop it for example until here this will be the regular clap but in this style what we are going to do is first bring the clap one of the clubs like this and then we're going to go again in the same place like this It feels like the track almost standing still when we do this. And then maybe go to like a break with your kick. And then there, this is the part where you bring your second clap. 
And what we're going to do is actually we will move this one up and we are unfold this and use this one, the, uh, the other clap that we had as a call. So it will be like kind of. Do you hear the idea? But that's not enough. Uh, the main problem here is like the other clap like this should be more like a sucking in like kind of. You see now it's much making sense. It's still not enough. It needs also big reverb to fill up the ambience to make the other hit a bit more drastic. But it means that you oftentimes need some kind of darker side of the uh, reverb, longer one, wet one. As you can see, I'm us using that one only on the call as claps. We can definitely make it more driven as well. So distort with that reverb. Oh yeah. This is my one of my own trick actually. I don't think anybody actually used this one in their tracks yet. Uh, at least I didn't hear yet, I will say. Uh, what we are going to do, take the drive at here. Actually, rather than using delay, I'm use, aiming for equals so that we can make a slight cool stuff there. Uh, what I'm going to do, ping pong, same thing, drive at 100%. Of course, I'm not 100%. Bring it down, the same idea. And take that filter off. I'm gonna, I want to have stereo field a bit narrow, that's why I want this one. And I'm gonna add a bit of reverb as well. And here, if we want to have filter, we can cut off some of the lows, but I want to keep the highs actually. This is actually one of my own innovation. Like I said, I haven't used it in any track yet, but probably I will use it at some point. I was just playing around this one and come up with this idea. But this was the second one, a little bit of innovation for me. And the third one will be the driving hats, another really important uh, pattern. So let's hop into that one. And this time I'm using a loop from Mercury Core sample pack. Sounds like this. really cool. Of course it needs a driving hat to carry out to just like a big room feel. And we will start with driving hats, 16 hats. I'm gonna go for closed hats. I'm gonna go for the Anya. The first thing that we of course do to put the 16 hat pattern in it. And 16 hat pattern is just you take this one and put like a four and four of four. So that's the reason that we call it 16 hats, right? Bam bam bam. Now we have 16. I tend to do it myself, just put something like a rising feel like this. So like this. It's already good because the sample itself is good, but we are going to make it much more interesting. So what the things that is important here is just making it like a, a bit more organic, a bit ever changing. So what I'm going to do, bring to LFO MIDI. The first one will be here. We will map it to fade in. Uh, sorry, fade out, and the second one will be fade in. So the both fade, fade, fade in and fade out is moving a lot. So I'm gonna just offset both of them. Depth here will be controlling how much we are moving that stuff. Take is here until here and increase the depth a bit more. The other thing that you can do, of course, you can implement a groove, right? You can pick anything uh, like percussions, take something like this. Maybe we can bring it in so that we can use it in different places. And here, you can just click it. I think it's too much. I'm going to do like this, select all. And if I just move it um, up, so we are slightly kind of changing. Really cool. The other thing that needs here is actually side chain to kick, side chain to kick. Be this. And maybe we can make it slightly brighter. Isn't this beautiful? Number one. Number two is off hats. And there's also a couple of tricks in our sleeves that we can utilize to make it really, really interesting. Open hats. Actually, mine kind of, yeah, I like that. I just want kind of analog.
the other thing that I really really like to do here is actually bring in an, an, an LFO but this time we will be a bit more tricky but we are going to do bring in overdrive and we are going to actually automate the amount in the overdrive to the LFO and it will be every, every time it will be slightly a bit more distorted slightly a bit brighter and less brighter so it also gives that different contrast to the sound I really really like this one and let's put it there all the time and volume it down a little bit and then I'm gonna instead of sign I'm gonna go for random this time you can actually uh, also sync it and put an offbeat really cool the other thing now we are having the sound like changing quite a bit we need something a bit more sharper to make the sound a bit more stable Charlie is perfect for this one actually and I'm gonna put it here replace it take the foe and take the hi-hat and the overdrive as well and then we're gonna just get this initial hit together we just need to hear this like pop sound right in the beginning Two more things you can actually layer up a bit more the hi-hats if you want the feather sound and the one other thing is done quite a bit is sending it to the reverb and distorting the verb and creating this really everything sitting in the same room feel we are going to do it in the last step because i'm gonna add a shaker as well this is also a cool trick because we want some kind of maybe swerving shaker sound to even derive it a bit more maybe we can get something like a trill going on and this is for people who always look for shaker loops actually you can make quite interesting loops yourself by only single shakers uh, sound put a tree version of it and then i'm gonna do something like this to start with then we can change it later Just like that so idea is every hit will be slightly different what does that mean if you unfold this you can do it like this like ta -ta 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 -ta. maybe we can have the second one the original one and the first one is the preparation preparation means that you can take like a tail like this you can see what is happening and the tail can be a bit transposing this one a bit yeah and maybe volume this up slightly we can eq it depending on how we feel with the other stuff that is the important part because this quite a something like this right yeah we're gonna push this one to the left and there's the pan you can either random pan as well but i'm gonna do it more purposely so to the left and to the right and in between one we can make it a bit random the final touch will be just doing a slight delay and let's solo this one more time i'm gonna bring this down very super fast and like this again I think that we should have gone for a bit brighter sound we can always open it up with overdrive but it's about sound selection oh that's too bright together of course it's a thriving sound and you need to write for this like you start probably like this I know that I have cool rise in the sample pack that is just just good and then I'm gonna bring like this the trick over here is I don't want the super clickness here and I'm gonna add a reverb and again side so chain the kick of course take this off off let's try we can even tune it up audio effects and if you go to reverb here there's a room drum rooms somewhere here i think here 
scrap that in. The thing that I don't like here is a bit stereoscopic and being done and the decay time is too long for me, at least for my taste. I'm gonna just group these guys. Let me see, this is also heads, I think. Yeah, and we're gonna send a little bit to the room. As you can see, you want this short, a bit in the middle. Let's diffuse. Together again. The one thing that, is, like I mentioned earlier, is actually driving this one a bit more. So the distorted reverb sound. It just gets crispy sound. Really cool. Again, together with. I know this is a bit more complicated, but once you grasp it, it doesn't really matter which type of track that you are doing. This, it doesn't need to be even main room techno track. You can use this in a progressive house. You can use like a regular electronic music, deep house, any genre. You can even use this in actual rock music. So really try to understand what I've done this one. Really, really important, really, really core uh, knowledge. You will be using the rest of your life, producing life. I guarantee you that. And that was it. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you learned something. And I will catch you in the next one. Goodbye.